Math 31, welcome to section 5.5. We're going to be taking a look at zeros of polynomial functions. All right, and you may be thinking, well, why are we going back to zeros of polynomials? Haven't we done that before? And, and we have, but we wanna really reiterate it and show you a couple of new techniques to find those zeros. And, and the reason behind this is because we've already taken a look at polynomials and their traits, but when we move over to rational functions, Rational functions are ratios of polynomials. So we have a polynomial in the numerator and the denominator. So it's gonna become really important for us to be able to find zeros of these numerators and denominators of these polynomials. Because certain traits over here happen when, at least for rational functions, when the numerator is zero, when the denominator is zero, when both of them zero out at the same time. So we really need to make sure we know how to find the zeros of polynomials so that we can find the zeros of the numerator of a rational function and the denominator of a rational function. So that's what we're going to be doing here, picking up a couple more techniques to help us find those zeros. Okay, so by the end of this section we should be able to use synthetic division, that technique we picked up last section, to help us factor some polynomials. We're also going to use the rational zero theorem to generate a list or to find rational zeros. So this theorem, it seems pretty intense, but it's like a starting point. We gotta start somewhere, we gotta find at least one zero, and then hopefully that unlocks the rest of them. And then we're just gonna find zeros of polynomial functions. And this can take a while. Uh, the last couple of examples in this section are gonna take a while. They're, they're pretty intricate and there's a lot involved. So let's talk about the factor theorem. Believe it or not, you, you kind of know this concept, we just haven't seen it written up in theorem form. But this says for any polynomial function, f of x, x minus k is a factor of the polynomial if and only if f of k is equal to zero. So you've seen this play out. If x minus k is a factor, that means k was a zero or an x-intercept of the polynomial. And when it says if and only if, you get it both ways, meaning if x minus k is a factor, you know the function value at that k value is zero. All right, and then if f of k is zero, then x minus k is a factor. So it goes both directions here. So with that, we're gonna try and figure out if a certain factor, they're gonna give us x plus four is a, they're gonna, ooh, I'm not using my words. For example, when we wanna determine whether x plus four is a factor of each polynomial. So let's use this factor theorem, okay? So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to do this. And then I, I wanna show you actually my favorite way. So if I wanna directly apply this factor theorem, if x plus four is a factor, right? If x plus four is a factor, I could write that as x minus a negative four. So I want you to see that x is lining up with x and k is lining up with negative four, right? It's always the opposite of the value that you see here. So here I'm saying k would equal negative four. So if I was going to apply the factor theorem, I would want to see if f of negative 4 was equal to 0. So I want to find out if f of negative 4 is equal to 0. If it is, if this is true, if f of k equals 0, then x minus k is a factor. That's what the polynomial, excuse me, that's what the factor theorem says. So let's find out if f of negative 4 is a factor. Now, if I wanted to figure this out, I've got to plug negative 4 in. And you can start to see it's gonna be a little bit cumbersome. Oops, and I'm gonna even run into space here. Let me put a little separator. Okay, now I don't wanna do this in my head. I, I would use my calculator to do this if I had a calculator. And then I'm gonna show you how you can do this using synthetic division. All right, I wanna show you how synthetic division is so much more useful than just um, dividing polynomials like we saw in the last section. All right, let me clear this out. I'm gonna store negative four into my x and then plug in my function, three x to the fourth minus 48x squared plus eight x plus 32. And what I'm hoping happens here is I'm hoping a zero pops out. If f of negative four is equal to zero, then from the factor theorem, I know x plus four is a factor, so let's see what we get here. Zero, all right, so I get that this is zero. I'll put a little check there. So therefore, x plus four is a factor of f of x. 
All right. Now that's all fine and good, but let's say you didn't have your calculator. It would be pretty annoying to actually crunch this by hand, and I want to show you how synthetic division can help you factor polynomials. And we'll start with how synthetic division can get us function values. So let me move the page up real quick here. And let's take a look at how we could apply synthetic division. If I was to take my function and divide it by x plus 4, let's use synthetic division to handle that. So if I want to try this with synthetic division, I'll put negative 4 here. All right, taking a look that this factor is a binomial with a lead coefficient of 1. Now, take a look at your polynomial. Did anyone notice that we skipped over the cubed term? So I'm going to need a placeholder of 0 there. All right, here we go. Something special is about to happen because x plus 4 is a factor of f of x. So let's try this. The 3 comes down. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. 0 minus 12, negative 12. Negative 4 times negative 12, positive 48. This is zeroing out. Negative 4 times 0 is 0. 8 plus 0 is 8. Negative 4 times 8 is negative 32. And what did I get over here? 0. So you can plug in negative 4 and see if you get a 0 back out. But without your calculator, that could be a little bit annoying. Or you could run synthetic division and see if you get a remainder of 0. If you get a remainder of 0, you know x plus 4 is a factor. Because the awesome thing, in addition to how all the awesome things about synthetic division, this is always your function value. So I would know f of negative 4 is equal to 0. So that's what's even cooler, or super cool, another super cool thing about synthetic division. Whatever the remainder is, it's your function value for that k value that you plugged in. All right, so let's see if I can do part b. Now I've got a longer looking polynomial. If I wanted to see if x plus 4 was a factor, again, I need to find out is f of negative 4 equal to 0. If it is, then the answer to my question is yes, x plus 4 is a factor. If f of negative 4 is anything other than 0, my answer is no, this is not a factor. All right, so let's find out. I don't want to plug it in. I, I mean, I could do this in my calculator, but I'm going to use synthetic division. I just find it so much quicker and easier to use. Let me write this a little bit better. All right, so if I take a look, I am not skipping over any powers of x. So we got 1, 6, 11, 12, 5, and negative 20. All right, here we go. What I'm hoping for is a big fat zero there. That's my, my goal. If, if I can say zero, then the answer is yes. If it's anything other than zero, my answer is no. So let's find out. We've got 1, negative 4, 2, negative 8, 3, negative 12, 0, 0. We've got 5, ooh, negative 20, oh, negative 40. All right, so since this does not equal 0, the answer to this question, determine whether x plus 4 is a factor, x plus 4 is not a factor. All right, so x plus 4 is not a factor of f of x. All right, and I also know another piece of information. So in addition, you also know f of negative 4 is equal to negative 40. Right? And that's easier for me to calculate. Like I think it's much easier for me to just find the remainder from synthetic division rather than sitting here and doing negative 4 to the fifth plus 6 times negative 4 to the fourth plus 11 times negative 4 cubed, plus 12 times negative 4 squared, gosh, I'm going to run out of room, plus 5 times negative 4 minus 20. That is not worth it to me. But just, just to show you that this is working, I could plug in now for my original function. Let's see, x to the fifth, oops, my calculator went out. x to the fifth, keep in mind negative 4 has been stored into x, plus 6x to the fourth, all right, plus 11x cubed, plus 12x squared, plus 5x minus 20. And after I plug all of that in, oh, that's not what I want. Oh gosh, I see it. Do you see I have a little typo here? This says 6 times x times 4, not 6x to the fourth. And I knew I was off because I should be getting a negative 40. Let me go insert that back there. 
There we go, negative 40. See, math works. So, like I said, I, I love synthetic division. It's gonna do a lot for us. It tells me my function value, right? I, I automatically know f of negative four is negative 40. On top of it, because this isn't equal to zero, I know x plus four is not a factor of f of x. In the same way that in part a, it was equal to zero, so this helped me factor my function. And I'm gonna show you how this stuff that's down here, that's to the left of your remainder, that's also going to help you factor your function. There's so much to synthetic division. It's super cool. All right, so with that, we're going to hang, or <laughs> I still can't use my words. We're going to head over to example two and practice synthetic division and finding zeros. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.